Hopefully you will all be able to see what I'm doing. And what we've got is some apparatus that we're going to use for our experiment today. So I will take you through what I've got and what I need to do with it. And then you're going to go and do, uh, do the same. So on your experiment sheet you'll see on the front page there's a picture of the apparatus that we have and it's, it's given to you there. We've got three cells. I've just taken normal uh, size D batteries that you buy in shops. Uh, but we don't call them batteries in science, we call them cells. And who can tell me what these three cells give to our circuit? Yes. They give energy. Good. Inside the cell there are chemical reactions that are happening. There's a chemical process in here and it's called chemical potential energy that's inside the cell. When you connect it up to a circuit, using these uh, circuit wires, these conducting wires, then that chemical energy that's inside here, the chemical potential, becomes electrical energy in your circuit. And then what will happen in the light bulb? What happens to the electrical energy? It changes into light energy. And also with these light bulbs they get hot, so that also is heat energy. So our three cells, our light bulb, our connecting wires, and then we've got two different meters here that we're going to be getting our readings from. The one is ammeter, which measures? Current. current. Well done. Voltmeter voltage. measures voltage. And another name for voltage is potential difference. So this measures current in amps, this measures uh, potential difference in volts. So each of these two things are going to be connected into our circuit. They're connected slightly differently and I'll show you uh, in case you've forgotten how that looks. I'll show you what uh, to do with that and then we're going to get some readings from these. So, there's all our apparatus and if you turn over the page in your uh, <coughs> sheet, the very first thing we have there is our aim. What is the aim with this experiment? Is the aim just to have fun and to use a Wednesday afternoon? No, the aim is to investigate the relationship between the potential difference across the light bulb and the current flowing through it. To investigate the relationship between potential difference across the light bulb and the current flowing through it. That's why I've got these two meters. So we're going to investigate the relationship between the potential difference across the light bulb and the current flowing through it. If we take one cell, I'm going to connect one cell into my circuit using these conducting wires which are in a bit of a knot. I'm going to use these conducting wires. I'll get to the voltmeter just now. I'm going to start with a very simple circuit, just connecting my ammeter, one cell, and one light bulb. So, let us start by connecting the cell to the light bulb. What do you notice? <coughs> nothing happens. Yes. Why does nothing happen? <coughs> because I've only connected it to one side of the cell. So what type of circuit is this? An open circuit or a closed circuit? Closed. This is open because I haven't joined all the ends. So we call this an open circuit. If the circuit is open, no current can flow. So I've got to close the circuit. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to now connect my ammeter to the light bulb over here. And you'll see it still doesn't work because I haven't joined the ammeter back to the cell. So this red uh, wire, you'll see there are three different options on my ammeter. And the first one is 50 milliamps, the next one's 500 milliamps, and the last one says 5 amps. So this is, uh, allows us to use the same ammeter for either very, very small current or much larger current with uh, uh, 5 amps. I'm going to put it in the middle one because the current that one light bulb, I mean one, uh, one cell generates is too much for the 50 milliamp uh, connection. So I put it into the 500 milliamp connection 
And then let me get this to stop falling over. Ah, there we go. And then watch what happens when I connect it to the cell. Ta da! We made light. <laughs> go us. Well, we didn't actually do anything, we just connected the cell to the light bulb in such a way that current can now flow through the circuit. And that current travels with energy, and that's why it can power uh, this light. So, if I look at my ammeter, I've now got a reading. You might not be able to see it from, from further away, but it's uh, just past 200. And the reason I look at the top numbers, you'll see it goes 0 to 500, the bottom it's 0 to 50 and 0 to 5. The reason I look at these top numbers is because I connected it into the 500 milliamp connection. So I must look at the numbers that end with 500 milliamps. So this means that this current is around about, let me put it down so I'm not moving it, it's around about 225 milliamps. So uh, I'm going to call this current 1 equals around about 225 milliamps is my first reading. And I'm, I'm going to leave the potential difference for a little while uh, because we want to talk about our hypothesis. And uh, what happens when I add another cell into my circuit? What do you think will, ha will happen if I add another cell? What do you think will happen to the light bulb? Will it shine dimmer? Will it shine brighter? Will it go off? <coughs> it's going to shine brighter. The reason is I've added another cell which adds more energy into the circuit, so more current flows, and the light bulb will be brighter. So if I add another light bulb, I mean another cell, we'll see what happens to the light bulb. So let's bring in our uh, voltmeter here, which is going to measure potential difference. And you'll see there's a negative sign, and then the other ones are 3 volts and 15 volts. This black connection goes into the uh, side that says negative. And I connect this side of my voltmeter to the side of the light bulb closest to the negative side of the cell. Let me say this again. I connect the negative side of my voltmeter to the side of the light bulb closest to the negative. So this over here is the negative side of the, the cell. You see, uh, you can see there's a negative on there. And this is connected to the negative. It's closer to the negative than obviously going that way around. So let me connect it, and it'll look like that. That way, rather. And then the red one I'm going to connect into 3 volts. And you will see when I do this, that it will have a reading. There we go. Got a reading of around about 1 volt. And again, I've connected into 3 volts, so I'll look at the numbers that end in 3. It uh, can be confusing, but don't look at the numbers that end in 15 unless you've connected into that uh, connection. And if I do connect into that uh, button, you'll see what happens to my reading. Much, much smaller. So it's difficult to read because that scale is uh, much bigger. There we go. If I connect it in there, I get a value of around about 1,15 volts. 1,15 volts. Now you'll see in the, uh, in the results table they've asked for current in amps, which means you can't write current in milliamps. You would have to divide this by 1,000 to get to amps when you do your results. So, let's see what happens uh, when you do it. You will test out your hypothesis. And let me turn that off for a little bit. Your prediction is as we add another cell to the circuit, what do you think will happen to the current reading and the potential difference reading? What do you think will happen to these two readings if I add another cell? We said just now we think the current will increase and the potential difference. Do you think this light bulb is going to use more energy? <laughs> yes, it will. If we add another cell, it's got more energy that it can use. So both of these values will increase. So let's look at our hypothesis. 
What we can say here is uh, we predict that as the current in the circuit increases, so you can write this down, as the current, as the current in the circuit increases, As current increases, we're going to say that the potential difference also increases. Now, you wouldn't put arrows, you need to put that into words. So, your words would say, as current increases, potential difference uh, also increases. As current increases, potential difference also increases, and you're going to go and check that out as you add more cells to your circuit. We'll do that just now. We've got a first draw circuit diagram, answer a couple more questions, and then you can go and do uh, the experiment. So as current in the circuit increases, potential difference also increases. That type of relationship we'll talk about just now. Uh, over the page, it asks us to describe that relationship, and uh, we'll describe that just now. So here is our circuit. We've got, to try and keep all these wires organized, but basically what we've got is we have got the cell connected to the light bulb, connected to an ammeter, connected back to the cell. This part of the circuit is called a series circuit. So this ammeter is connected in series. So just below that next box it says state how you will connect each of the following components. Your ammeter you connect in series. And now you'll notice my voltmeter is not connected into that same path. It's connected as an add-on path. It's a separate branch to my main circuit. And we call that a parallel connection. So your ammeter is connected in series, it's actually part of the circuit. It's part of the path that the current has to travel. And over here, your voltmeter is connected in parallel. It has a very high resistance, doesn't let current flow through it. So the current still flows through the circuit, but it measures how much energy is used inside this light bulb. So we connect this in parallel. And we're going to draw the circuit diagram. Uh, I'm going to draw uh, the components for you. We're starting off with a light, uh, a light bulb, me. <laughs> a cell. There's our cell. Uh, you, I could use a ruler, but I'm going to rather do this freehand. My cell will look a little something, I mean, my circuit will look a little something like this. What is that? This is my light bulb. I'm going to carry on with the circuit. And what is that? That's the ammeter. It's connected into the same path as the light bulb. And it's connected back to the cell. How many cells have I drawn here? One. Just one. Now, I've drawn the first step. Uh, if we were to add another cell, I would then... Uh, if I was to draw the circuit diagram, I'd make space and put in another cell, but this is fine for now. There's one thing missing though, and that is my voltmeter, which I connect in parallel, meaning I connect it as a separate branch. It's added on to the main branch, it's hanging on to the wire, that's the voltmeter. So if you could take this diagram and draw it in the space that's given to you, and uh, if you aren't sure, if you don't remember what each of these different things are, you're welcome to label those. And just write next to this is the cell, this is the light bulb, this is the voltmeter, and that is the ammeter. And uh, hopefully you'll still be able to see when I turn off this light bulb. Yes. <clears throat> in 
Great Thames, why do you think we draw circuit diagrams like this? Why can't we just draw what we've got here? Draw all the wires and draw everything like we've set it up. Yes? I think if we go like a connector, it's not easy to, to show how to read it, how to read it. Well done. Yeah, if we, if we draw it like this, it's very confusing to see, okay, where do these wires go? They, they curl up and they get messy and it's difficult for people to see what is going on here. But if we have a, a common language, I suppose you could call it, a way of drawing them, someone on the other side of the world who doesn't know exactly what we've done could see this and say, oh, I know what that circuit looks like. I can, I can picture it in my mind. I can make this circuit based on that diagram. So that's why uh, we have circuit diagrams. It's a way of, uh, a common way of representing a circuit. The last question we need to answer before we start our experiment is how are we going to increase the amount of current in our circuit? How are we going to change the amount of current that is flowing through this light bulb? What is the one thing that we are able to change? The number of cells. Well done. This is the only thing we are going to change. So, in that last question there, how are you going to increase the amount of current? You are going to add cells. So, your answer there would be by adding cells to the circuit. So, we've got one cell here, and I've given uh, three cells to everyone. Uh, the reason we're only going with three is because I don't want to blow the light bulb, and it also makes it quicker for us to complete the experiment. You will see from those three sets of values, you will see a pattern. Okay, what you need to do is you need to get into groups of four. Uh, I think there are, there, there should be four groups of four and one group of three. And I'm going to move that last <coughs> workstation, which is now in the afternoon sun. We'll move that just to the front here, and we'll have five groups. So if you could please uh, break into groups of four and then one group of three and find a, a workstation. 